from Hong Kong. So my research area is social network. So recently I, you know, I study um, particularly focused on caregivers, informal caregivers and their social networks. So we are going to present our findings you a few minutes later. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Yes, how everybody. Uh, my name is San. It's from Hong Kong as well. Uh, my expertise is with doing research in social capital. So Kai and I have a very close uh, research interest. So uh, care, uh, carers, community care support is one of our research projects. So uh, I, 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 I'm very happy to share with you all about my our research findings about carer cafe and uh, community development. Thank you. And Louise, please. Hello everybody, my name is Louise. I am the head of community services for a charity called Independent Age and we are based in the UK. And um, I look after projects that support older people in the community. And our work is focused around getting people to be more connected, but how we also utilize that to build stronger communities. Thank you, Louise. And uh, Alona. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alona Stanislavchik I'm from Belarus. I'm an executive director of Belarusian Association of Social Workers. It's a non governmental organization, and I'm going to speak today about empowering uh, families affected with mental illness uh, in Belarus. Thank you very much. Uh, if I understand correctly, the first presentation will be from uh, Kay and Sam. Okay. Please. Okay. So is it okay? Yeah. Is it? Yes. Uh, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, let's get started. Uh, today, uh, well, I'm very happy to share our research findings about uh, research. A community development project in Hong Kong called Akara Cafe. Uh, our topic today is the, uh, is the about the mechanisms of informalization of formal services. Uh, we are doing case study of Akara Cafe in Hong Kong. Uh, next, next slide, please. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, for the background, Kara Cafe, uh, because in Hong Kong, uh, aging in community policy is, direct, is one of the direction of of uh, Hong Kong aging policy, aging in place, and so uh, a lot of long term elderly care work shifts from the formal institution to informal caregivers, so that a community is one of their uh, the site to develop their uh, uh, this kind of service transformation in the community. Uh, under the aging place uh, framework, fam family members always bear the right to clock a uh, carer's duties, and so and 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 those uh, informal caregiving work uh, bring the carers a lot of burdens, and exhaustions. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Okay, uh, the previous one, the previous one. Uh, no, no. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, facing this challenge, challenge in the community, uh, the um, the Hong Kong F Federation of Women Centers pioneered a community initiative called Care Cafe since 1918s. Uh, you can see that the right hand side of the, this photo is me, and and it is based on the previous. Uh, their previous community carer support project, uh, such as their uh, their core volunteers in project and then sister uh, sisterhood or or they, their their community their social capital in the previous project. So this carer cafe uh, can have a very strong uh, community support. Uh, 
uh, uh, when 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 they in, when they launch this program. Thank you. And uh, then this cafe uh, is to establish an informal social support network through the women's and carers participation in the in the cafe. Okay, next slide, please. Yes, uh, the Carer Cafe is not only a physical place uh, to let the uh, carers into community have a have, have a lo lo location of gathering. Uh, it also addresses the niche of the mainstream formal uh, uh, social service because the formal because mainstream formal formal uh, service for the carers is it, it, all about uh, the is all about. Uh, 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 Doing a case handling so that if the carer cannot go to the center, they can they 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 cannot assess uh, the the mainstream mainstream family service. So the carer cafe is one of their uh, the the the, the contact point between the mainstream service and the community. Uh, so uh, the strategies of carer cafe is a kind of community development. Then let the uh, carer be uh, be engaged and then and then, and so that they can. They can we the, the project staff can do a lot of things in, in in that area. So next slide, please. So uh yeah, this is about research. Kyle, this is your turn. So our study is an ongoing evaluation study on the impact of care cafe organized by the Federation of Women Center from January 2020 to December 2022. So uh, we have evaluated three care cafes in different locations, uh, but the field work is suspended due to the COVID-19 and resumed recently. So this project is funded by uh, Joy Center and Caritas Institute of Higher Education. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we did some focus group and in that interview with the care caregivers who joined the Care Cafe and some volunteers in the cafe. So before we find out the impact of the Care Cafe, first we need to know what the caregivers need. So based on the interview data, we find that uh, some most of them need some material support, for example, financial subsidies, because uh, most of these caregivers are come from uh, lower class. Another uh, another need they yeah is information for example uh what kinds of surveys they can get where they can get or even recently um some information for preventing COVID nineteen or where they can get the vaccination also emotional support is important uh they really want to find someone to listen to them to their frustration or worries. So the next uh, need they is social circle or social network. Uh, it is quite important for them to stepping out from the care caregiver's role. They want to change their identity or they want to change switch their world. So they need another social circle or social network. So uh, another need is gendered space. So some people may think that, well, they caregivers uh, can go to the park or library or even shopping mall uh, to talk about their frustration or you know sitting in fast food shop to you know share their frustration with other neighbors or other other yeah other people other friends but uh, our caregivers show that uh, tell us that you know uh, it is quite weird to quiet in the fast food shop other customers will look at them it makes them feel embarrassed and it is not okay to share their frustration to their neighbors because their frustration may become gossip in the whole neighborhood so these are what they need uh, uh, and that's about the characteristics of the care cafe uh, so first it create a gendered first place and 
a pace that makes our female caregivers feel safe because uh, most of caregivers are female and this cafe is particularly designed for caregivers. So uh, when they are in a group of female caregivers, they will feel more comfortable. And another characteristic is it uses food and drink as a welcomed, uh, to welcome the new participants or new caregivers or caregivers. So the caregivers are familiar with the food and drink and the quality is very good. It makes them feel, oh, I'm respect. They use good food, good drink to welcome me. So, and it is a place emphasized on care identity because most of the participants are caregivers. So they know that everyone's caregivers. So uh, it emphasizes on the identity. Also because uh, it is a place for them to gather or to interact with other people. So it helps to you know, establish the informal social support network and help them to accumulate more social capital. So in this character very interestingly, it encouraged me time. It means that you can just sit there, drink coffee, or uh, you know, do nothing, or just watch video on your mobile phone. But you, you don't need to interact with other people. Sitting alone there is definitely okay because uh, we think that, or the cafe think that me time is important for caregivers. Also, <clears throat> I accept emotional expressions. So it is definitely okay to cry or share your frustration, anger, or worry with other people uh, because you know, all caregivers know that it is not easy to be a caregiver. Sometimes you need to express your emotion. <coughs> so the characteristic yeah, of the caregivers report. So now how to engage this caregivers so attract them to come and continue to come to, to visit the caregivers. Uh, so we use the term informalization but the caregiver is not informally organized. It actually it is very structural organized because they have four volunteer teams. One is the drink team prepare the drinks. Uh, another is food team so prepare the food and it's a and they, they have some volunteer well trained for emotional support also some caregiver need to you know look after their children so the cafe also have child care volunteer team so that the caregivers can really enjoy the cafe apart from volunteers there are some social workers or project staff standby to help the caregivers so, you know, if this is the coffee bean, I'm sorry, the word is Chinese, uh, but this is the pictures taken in the cafe. So the coffee bean, very good. Uh, the drink and the food they prepare, they try to make some pancake. <clears throat> so how to informalize the surface? So first is informalize the space. So uh, actually it is the conference room, but they put some sofa and flower and pictures, some you make them look like a home uh, or your living room so that the caregivers feel easier. So uh, more familiar with the environment. And that's the participant procedure. <coughs> Usually you need to, you know, take some uh, in uh, interviews and evaluation to join the some formal service. But for the caregivers, uh, for the care cafe, what you need to do is just fill in the form, uh, fill in your name, telephone numbers, uh, your emergency contact, then finish the post participant procedures. It makes them feel easier, make the caregiver feel easier. Professional service, um, actually the service provided there is you can just sit there alone, do what you want to do, or even sleep. So uh, the social worker will not actively come and ask what they can help you, what kind of service you need. So they won't be that active. Uh, the professional service there is everyone's ready. Uh, when you need, you can voice out and or you can just sit there and enjoy your me time. Activity contents. Actually, there are three kinds of activities. First one is uh, sit there alone, enjoy your me time, or there are some, you know, uh, individual activities. You can draw some pictures, or there are group activities. So you have the 
choice. You can choose what you want to do in the uh, cafe. So it is quite different from other formal professional service, which is well planned, well designed. You have to follow the protocol, the timeline. It's quite different. So here's the uh, registration form and the poster and the menu. I'm sorry again, the drug is Chinese. And uh, the, 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 you can feel the joy, yeah, the individual activities. So, and then sometimes. Yes, uh, and it, it, it is, uh, this is the conclusion of, of our studies, that very preliminary analysis. And, and I also would like to highlight the the difference between um, the, the the ordinary uh, uh, coffee shop and co ordinary cafe and the carrier cafe, the difference is, it, is about community development. Be ju just Carl mentioned uh, the carrier cafe has a lot of features about acceptance, uh, autonomy, and stepping out opportunities, identity, uh, shared identity, and and shared, uh, mutual support. Uh, if if there there are no Community development um, element inside the cafe, uh, it cannot uh, have a such kind of acceptance atmosphere for the carers to share their ex emotions and share their their their, their tears, their pain uh, in, in 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 the caring experience. Carer cafe it, uh, uh, it, it can 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 make the formal service engage the carers easier in the community and and then and the cafe also have has a very special special role is to organize the care the carers to accept the mainstream service i think that is a very important um uh features uh in in the discussion of carers a uh, committee carers funding committee development and it is very different from the mainstream uh Cafes such as Starbucks or, 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 or other cafe, which is not for not not for uh, uh, cultivating um, uh, a trustful and acceptance um, relationship in in providing support. Okay, uh, so I did this last slide of the presentation, right? Uh, okay. Yes, yes. So uh, that's all our, our, our sharing today. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion uh, afterwards. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, dear Kai and Sam, for your um, lovely presentation. It's really interesting experience and it, it's inspiring. Thank you. Uh, later we'll have discussion, but now we um, will go for discussion, uh, for, for presentation, please. Um, using community development to overcome blindness amongst older people. Please, please. Hello, everybody. Um, I'll introduce myself again. Um, my name is Louise and I work for a charity called Independent Age. And our remit is to support older people, so people who are over 65, to live a life full of dignity, choice and purpose. And one of our projects is a reconnections project. And as Victoria mentioned, um, you may have much more experience than this than me. So I'm passing over to a video that my manager made um, one of the managers that I look after, um, who is the expert in this project, and I'll happily answer your questions afterwards. So please forgive me while I share my screen and hopefully it will work. Um, can you see that? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. here we go. I'm Carmen Reed, the Service Manager for Reconnections in Guildford and Waverley. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell you about the Reconnections pilot here in Guildford and Waverley. Reconnections is part of Independent Age, an organisation whose vision is that we can all live a happy, connected and purposeful later life. Our pilot started in Guildford and Waverley in November 2020 during lockdown and as of November this year will become a commission service. We work with individuals and communities to support connections in later life. This model has been well tested in other pilot sites and continues to evolve. To evolve.
Our approach is a little different to the more traditional befriending model where a service is provided to a resident. Our approach is very much personalised and not service driven. We don't treat older adults as victims of age. We help people to find a solution. We're not the solution itself. We help people to create independence, not dependence on us or our volunteers. We're a creative team and we try and think outside the box and the age label. So looking for connections that are not necessarily for traditionally for older people. Finding purpose for people is important. And finding connection is far more than filling a diary. We all know that we can have a diary full of things to do, but we can feel lonely amongst that. It's about meaningful connection. That's what we're trying to find. So who are we? Well, Reconnections is a partnership of local people working together. So we are anybody in the community, from a pub landlord to a social worker, someone in a youth club, a volunteer, someone at the local council, a health worker, so a doctor, any health or social care professional. It could be anybody. Anybody who's got connections with anybody else can just make that help other people make those connections with each other. So a typical journey would, would look like this in a round for a person being supported for about six months. So our referral pathway is open. We do have a pathway through our local social prescribers for health and social care professionals, but it's, it's open and anybody can refer themselves, their, their neighbours, their parents, anybody at all. Then what we focus on is the person's personalised plan. We spend time getting to know a person, getting alongside them in their own home and finding out what good would look like for them and also finding out what any barriers or challenges may be. Often people um, don't know straight away what it is, what good would look like. Often that they'll tell you about all the kind of things that they don't want to do. So we can guide these conversations by using our five ways to well-being. And, and then use that six months up to six months to help support that person to build their confidence so that they transition to independence and uh, improved health and well-being. Obviously, it's up to six months. If a person achieves their goals before that, then they, they don't have to stay for a whole six months. But it's not generally more than that, because in other areas where the, the model has been tested, we find that if people, it, it's more than six months, it will tend to build um, more dependence on the service. So our five ways to well-being, these may well be familiar with some of you, but adapted to sort of fit our reconnections model. So getting social, whether that be face to face in groups, maybe over the telephone or online or virtual, sometimes connection or being social can be by um, association or something meaningful. Getting active, can be about building strength and confidence, increasing a step count towards achieving a goal. Get learning, practical skills. For example, we had an older gentleman a year or so ago whose wife had just gone into a care home and he really wanted to learn how to cook. So we matched him with a volunteer and he was able to start cooking for himself independently. Getting helpful. All of our people have had long, long lives before they met us and they have skills and things that they, they want to share with others. It could be around digital skills or sharing things across the age spectrum. For example, we had a gentleman who um, was a motor mechanic, motor engineer. So he wanted to share his skills of motor mechanics and engineering and volunteered with a local group of young people who weren't in mainstream school who were learning motor skills. So he, he was able to share his, his motor skills with them. And getting mindful. So does, does a person want to improve their mood or emotional well-being? This could be through mindfulness sessions or maybe through talking therapies. So how do we measure progress? Well, we ask some questions at the beginning of the service. So they would be the, the UCLA, which is three indirect loneliness questions and also the CLS direct loneliness question. 
as well as the Michael, my concerns and well-being question. They're all questions that have scales on them. And these questions are asked right at the beginning at the triage point, then at six months and again at 12 months to measure improvement in a person's loneliness and well-being. We also ask people to rate their satisfaction of the service at three months and at six months. So our approach to team recruitment, induction, training and support. Well, we advertise as much pos as possibly locally through our networks and partners because we're a very local service. So people with local knowledge will be it will make it easier for them. We try to look for people with uh, no experience of working with older people so that they don't come along with preconceived ideas about older people and the types of things that they think older people might like to do. And we also try and make our adverts on social media fun and appealing for people. Once we have recruited that person, then we will start the induction process. So when we were recruiting the team during lockdown, we did take the opportunity to get to know each other by doing some challenges together. We had a list of items to find or buy from local shops. We paired up and used things like wheelchairs, blindfolds, headphones and walkers to try and understand some of the physical challenges that some of our service users may face. Following that, each of us watched The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, a great film that explores diversity, prejudice, communication, disability, attitudes and activities. A great training tool. Then we have wellbeing sessions once a month, where it's an opportunity for us to get together as a team and join in with something locally. We've been doing, we've done some litter picking, gardening at a residential home for retired merchant seamen, and we had a taster session at a local community therapy garden. Most recently, we all went to the launch of the Guildford Walkfest Festival, which is a festival of uh, walks every day during September. So engaging with local partners. So prior to the, the pilot starting, we held an engagement event, which was to meet and involve other local organisations to talk and have conversations about potentially tricky situations about starting up the pilot in the, in, uh, the pilot and the service in the patch in the area. Then there was a lot of reading of local strategies to find the synergies and clarification where the service could fit within those strategies. Then came the mapping of all the organisations, sectors, teams, networks, etc., and all the activities, things that are happening in the area. And then we tried to uh, start engaging with um, all of these different organisations on platforms such as social media or at events. So the meter side here came about from discussions um, last year, early last year, between ourselves, adult social care and the social prescribers, where it was recognised that people had become less active during lockdown. We got a small piece of funding from Surrey County Council and developed the monthly meet us idea, which is to arrange a small group of people to meet at a local location to enable friendships to form. We choose a different location each month, share details across our networks and on social media, and it's open to all ages. We try to keep the Meet Us active with walks for all abilities, but there's always a cafe for a drink and a chat afterwards. We've also arranged some Meet Us Again sessions for the more popular meetings, where we invite the same group of people to come back to continue their conversations before leaving it up to them to continue their connections on their own. Oasis. So paintings in hospital have a benefactor who wanted to or who wants to have some individual pieces of art created for some socially isolated people and wanted to connect people through art. So we set up a set a series of five sessions where each time we meet up and experience a new art technique. So we've been we've done some drawing, some photography, some pottery, some painting and some digital art. We've been guided by local volunteer artists and the participants have discovered and rediscovered their artistic talents and love of art. For these sessions, we were able to use the facilities at a local community centre, local pub, 
Eco Centre and for the pottery session, we were able to join forces with a mental health awareness event at G Live, which is a local theatre. Finally, I have a couple of case studies for you. The first one is about Betty, who uh, broke one hip and then the other. She was identified as vulnerable during COVID and got her shopping delivered. She bought a huge TV and binged watch Netflix. She wanted to go back and do her shopping again, but she was finding it hard to walk nowadays after her falls. So when we asked her what good would look like, her face lit up. She wanted to go swimming, but her doctor said she wouldn't be able to do it as breaststroke wasn't advised. I wouldn't be able to get in and out of the pool anymore. Well, with the help of and the, the support of her volunteer, Erica, Betty was able to do just that and was able to go along to Surrey Sports Park um, and was able to, to get back in that pool. And finally, Heather and Richard. Heather moved to the UK during COVID and was very isolated. She lacked confidence, driving and didn't know the area. She suffered a bereavement. She wanted to get active and meet people in a similar situation. Richard was referred by his GP due to depression. He'd become very isolated following bereavement as well and was becoming more withdrawn. He was struggling with his mental health and described himself as being in a very dark place. Heather and Richard made several links through the reconnections team, including with each other. Heather is teaching him how to cook and he is helping her overcome her fear of driving. They often share a Sunday roast at the pub or go on long dog walks. Heather has gone on to volunteer with reconnections and Richard has offered to help a local resident who is partially sighted. Richard is repairing a bench from Heather's garden at Men in Sheds and is now also attending counselling. And as Richard said, Look what that one phone call has done. Well, thank you so much for listening to me. Louise is on hand to answer any questions. And once again, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And I'll look forward to your questions at the end. Oh. Thank you very much. Louise, is it the uh, uh, end of representation or you continue to, do you want to add something? Um, I, I was conscious of time, Victoria, but um, yeah, it's just to say that the project that Cara was talking about in Waverley, we also run and we look to Scotland as well. It's really unity based. It's local strength and partnerships and so every person just spoke to them they want to value person and skills that they can offer back to the community and not being a victim of their age thank you very much i just thinking that uh, if we are lucky we'll uh, all be uh, in this third age and it would be very good to spend this time in a good mood, in happiness, and yeah, to be, to, to be happy in the state. And thank you yeah, very much. Definitely, definitely. After we will look more, we will have a potential discussion. And uh, now um, I would like to, um, uh, to give the floor to our third speaker, to uh, Alena Stanislavchik. Uh, about empowering cares of uh, families affected by severe in virus. Please, Alona. Okay, thank you. Um, can I share my presentation myself or? Okay. <clears throat> Please let me know if you can see it. Is it okay? Yes, hello. Um, we got uh, it. And okay. Does it change? <laughs> okay. Before I uh, 
uh, about uh, our experience, I mean, my organization, what we do to, for empowering families affected with uh, severe mental illness in Belarus, I would like to uh, say a few words uh, just to make you understand what kind of um, families with, uh, affected by severe mental illness face uh, um, uh, a little, a few words about our system, uh, medical and support system, to make you understand what possibilities, uh, opportunities, and um, services uh, are available for uh, family members uh, and for people with mental illness uh, in Belarus. Uh, <clears throat> according to um, most of uh, surveys um, uh, which held uh, every year, mostly every year across the world, um, most of mental illness develops in old uh, teenage or uh, young adult age. And that means that the age of family care gives uh, between uh, 40 and 60 age. And that means that they have a lot of responsibilities uh, in the family, not only taking care of uh, the uh, family member with mental illness, but also taking care of uh, for other children if they uh, if they have in the family and uh, grandparents and uh, the situation is getting worse um, um, by the years and uh, in two, uh, 2015 um, uh, an organization UFAMI, it's European um, uh, Federation of Association uh, of Organizations with uh, Families with Mental Illness they uh, um, organized a uh, big uh, survey uh, in 22 countries uh, and this uh, survey uh, um, it, it uh, show uh, so many um, uh, different challenges uh, family caregivers of persons with severe mental illness face every day. Uh, it shows that um, a typical family caregiver for a person with mental illness is a woman around 60 years old, and family caregiving is a long standing, uh, usually starting from 15 years. Uh, and more uh, in time consuming task. Uh, it, it can take uh, 24 and more uh, uh, hours per week. And um, usually caregivers, they don't have other relatives to share uh, responsibilities uh, with uh, those responsibilities. And um, they also uh, often uh, feel uh, really isolated um, and they uh, at the moment, they point, um, they reach a like it called breaking point when they want to uh, quit from these responsibilities, and uh, usually it leads to the situation when a uh, family member with uh, mental uh, illness with disabilities they go to the residential house. This is uh, one of the reason uh, why it's happened, uh, and um, uh, caregivers they. Um, uh, they experience uh, different kind of burdens, like emotional burden. Uh, they feel uh, anxiety. Uh, they uh, feel social burden. Uh, they feel physical burden. Uh, they face a lot of problems with their physical health, and uh, they face uh, problems with uh, financial support, uh, um, financial uh, stability, and uh, they also uh, are really concerned about the future. Uh, of uh, the family members with mental illness, what will happen uh, next if, uh, for example, if I can't um, take my responsibility anymore, what will happen if, uh, if I die, for example. Uh, and uh, if to speak about our system uh, in Belarus, um, uh, predominant uh, system in Belarus is medical system. Uh, we, uh, in fact, we don't have uh, like community-based social support system for people with mental illness and uh, for families especially. And most of uh, money um, in our country is allocated to the hospitals and boarding houses. Uh, and um, uh, if to speak about um, professionals in uh, our medical system, we also. Uh, face a lack of uh, professional social workers uh, in mental health system. Uh, as you can see on this slide, is less than one percentage uh, or one uh, less than one uh, person, uh, one professional for uh, ten thousand uh, po population. 
uh, and uh, we also face a lack of uh, psychologists and some other professionals in mental health system uh, in Belarus. Uh, if to speak uh, about uh, social support system, uh, then uh, most of our uh, social support system uh, is, um, uh, if to speak about uh, people's mental illness, um, uh, 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 it's only about people's mental illness. Uh, in most of those people, uh, they are living in uh, residential, closed residential institutions. Uh, it's around uh, 90 boarding houses uh, in Belarus. Uh, it's uh, psychoneurological boarding houses, so-called. Uh, and nine of them uh, is for children uh, with mental illness, with mental disabilities, with intellectual uh, disabilities. And there are a lot of uh, problems in these institutions, in these big closed uh, boarding houses. And uh, the key issues is um, that all the residents are totally deprived of their legal capacity. Uh, they can't make any decisions about their life. They can't work. Uh, and uh, the legal guardian uh, of those people who live uh, in these boarding houses is a director uh, of this organization. And, and as you can uh, imagine, actually, it's uh, really difficult to realize the rights of those people who live in this boarding house uh, because all the decisions are uh, made by this director, by the director of this institution. Uh, and uh, most of residents in these institutions are totally excluded from public life. Um, we also have uh, so-called round-the-clock stay services, but uh, it's um, only people with uh, old people and people with uh, first and second disability group can um, uh, uh, can get access to this service. Uh, so uh, as you can imagine, uh, it, it's um, it, it's really not, uh, uh, most of people, uh, those who uh, face problems with mental illness, they are afraid of uh, uh, to, to go to this system. Um, but uh, at the same time, we don't have a real uh, support system, community-based support system, um, uh, for them uh, at the local level. And this is the reason why most uh, of those people who live alone, they, uh, they have to go to this uh, residential institution. They don't have any other uh, possibilities to receive support, to get support what they need, uh, especially if we have to speak um, uh, around the clock stay and, and so on. Uh, and if you um, speak about uh, our um, community-based uh, support uh, system, we have uh, uh, we have uh, around uh, 150 governmental centers. Uh, they provide uh, different kind of support for a population for vulnerable groups. Uh, it's uh, they provide social support, psychological support, legal assistance, but um, uh, they work with different groups of people, and uh, it's uh, really difficult to organize um, an integrated approach to uh, for every uh, every single group. Uh, so um, um, I mentioned uh, the key issues we faced in this system as well. Uh, uh, if to speak about mental health, uh, uh, mental health, health illness, uh, we um, we uh, face a lack of knowledge uh, based in skills in mental health among social workers. Most of them uh, don't really know how to work, for example, with people with schizophrenia and some other severe mental illness, and this is a great challenge. Uh, and uh, most of services are focused on people with disabilities, and I would like to mention uh, that um, according to our legislation, not every person with mental illness have disability. We have a different system of assessment, uh, uh, assessing disability in, in our country. Uh, and significant part of people's mental illness in Belarus doesn't have a disability. But at the same time, according to the, the international approach, they are. Uh, and we are uh, among the key issues in our uh, social support system, governmental social support system is uh, a paternalistic approach. Uh, and uh, we, we don't have uh, like strength, uh, strength based approaches in our uh, governmental centers because it's really um, difficult to organize it uh, there. 
And uh, there are also a list of uh, restrictions uh, based on the diagnosis. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, some people uh, with um, uh, severe mental illness, they can't apply for services uh, in uh, governmental uh, uh, centers uh, because of this legislation. Uh, and especially those people with uh, schizophrenia and some other uh, um, severe mental illness. And that means they don't have any access to social support uh, if they need. Uh, that's why they have to go, for example, to residential institutions to uh, receive support uh, they need. Uh, if to speak about non-governmental organizations, uh, uh, we have less than 20 to the moment uh, organizations across the whole country, uh, those who work with people, those who provide services for people's mental illness. Uh, it's, uh, those organizations, they, uh, of course, they use a practice-oriented approaches and they have specialists with a high level of knowledge and skills in working with people's mental illness. Uh, but at the same time, they face a lot of uh, problems like um, uh, financial stability and low organizational capacity, and they don't have uh, possibilities to, they can provide a limited list of services to a limited number of people. Uh, so uh, it's a really great uh, problem for our country. Uh, and most of them, uh, as I mentioned, them, most of them are located in big, big cities. Um, if, to, uh, if to speak about our experience, what we do uh, for what kind of programs we have for people's mental illness and uh, for uh, family members uh, affected with mental illness. Uh, we have uh, several programs. Uh, one, uh, one of the main is a so-called clubhouse model rehabilitation uh, center. Uh, and we run this activity starting from 2011. Uh, we have to the moment four uh, clubhouses uh, across the country. Uh, we have a program for supporting and empowering families of people's mental illness. Uh, we started uh, from 2020. Uh, and um, many years ago, we started from um, training information uh, and um, support for professionals uh, in social and med medical sphere. Uh, to uh, implement uh, different um, good practice, international practice in uh, in our country. We, every year we do a lot of uh, webinars, seminars, uh, educational courses for, for our professionals uh, to uh, for making changes in our system, in our mental health system. And we also uh, do a great work for uh, fighting stigma in mental health in our country because it's a really high level of stigma in uh, in Belarus to the moment. Uh, and uh, just a few words about uh, uh, all these activities. <clears throat> if to speak about the club clubhouse model is uh, uh, totally different from uh, traditional centers, uh, social service uh, centers. Um, uh, people, um, those who visit uh, this rehabilitation program, uh, uh, they uh, they call it not like clients, they are members, uh, it's a community, uh, it's not like a traditional organization, a community. Uh, and um, we, we are trying to not only to uh, <clears throat> uh, to give something uh, for, for a person, but also to teach them uh, to take responsibility for their lives. Uh, to take their uh, responsibility for uh, making a plan of the future, what what I should do for the future, what what I what what I'm going to do if uh, if I will face if I will face crisis in the future. Uh, so we do educational uh, programs, we do a recovery uh, program, uh, we do employment program to help to help them uh, in this uh, recovery uh, process. Uh, and uh, there are um, some um, results uh, for, for the last year, for example, uh, and the main result of this uh, clubhouse model, uh, it's uh, uh, reduced um, um, number of hospitalization uh, among uh, members of uh, this clubhouse. Uh, and um, uh, we also uh, started, some years ago, we started the project uh, to support families affected with mental illness. And we do this work uh, in cooperation with Clubhouse Europe. It's a big organization which unit um, clubhouses across the Europe. 
Uh, and we <clears throat> started uh, with the International Model of Support Center for Families Affected with Mental Illness. We provide uh, uh, individual support for family members, including legal support, psychological support, uh, counseling. We provide information about what kind of services are um, available at the local level, uh, where can they apply. And we also help them to apply if they face any problems uh, to do this. Uh, we provide, we do uh, uh, support groups uh, accompanied by professionals in the field of social work, mental health and law. Uh, and we also uh, uh, run uh, like a self uh, support uh, groups for family members and some other um, different activities to help them in this uh, <clears throat> process. Uh, and we also do educational courses uh, for relatives and caregivers of people's mental illness, we help them to understand illness. Um, we, have, we help them to understand with our professional in psychiatry and social work, what, what kind of uh, problem they face. And uh, we, we are trying to help them to make a plan for the future. We are, we are trying to help them uh, to make a plan, not, not only recovery plan, but also financial plan, uh, taking into account all the uh, challenges they face in everyday life. Uh, and um, we also, uh, uh, right now, we work on uh, launching a an, an website for family members and caregivers. Uh, we, we, will, we want to collect all the information and uh, to give them access to information, uh, to knowledge, to skills, and uh, possibility to uh, discuss uh, different topics with our professionals uh, in mental health, social work, and law. And we also do uh, campaigns to raise awareness on mental health and combat stigma uh, in Belarus. As I mentioned, we, ha we have a really high level of stigma. People are afraid of speaking uh, about their problems, uh, about their challenges, not only uh, with, uh, uh, like, uh, with their community, but also for, with uh, other uh, mem family members, uh, they are afraid to speak about it, they are afraid to uh, talk openly, uh, and this is a great uh, problem for, for uh, Belarus, because um, a lot of uh, changes, uh, um, as, as, as I know, in, in many countries, a lot of changes uh, happen because uh, this uh, um, topic become uh, open for, for communities, for, for the world, so we are trying to change this. Uh, and we also um, do uh, some work to uh, make changes in our system, in our medical uh, system, in our social system. We work with um, medical professionals, uh, we do trainings for them, we explain them uh, different international good uh, practice and approaches like uh, shared decision making and supported decision making, uh, how to use it in their work, how to change the approaches in uh, their work. And uh, we also uh, just two years ago, we did a map of services across the country, uh, uh, services provided for people with mental illness for their families. Uh, it's open, uh, it, it's free for using. And um, we also, uh, this year, we finished with a mobile application for, um, uh, to support, uh, to help uh, specialists providing services uh, to the elderly uh, and relatives caring for the elderly at home, especially for people's uh, dementia. Uh, and this uh, application has um, uh, uh, different tools to help relatives uh, to organize um, uh, care in, uh, for the elderly at home and uh, different videos, uh, information, how to organize it and what to do, where to get uh, support. And uh, the last is we also have a monthly newsletter. Uh, it's an electronic journal uh, in mental health called, called Voices. Uh, and uh, we um, uh, we, we, we collect different um, great uh, practice across the world uh, and across Belarus to share with our specialists, with family members, to uh, speak about uh, challenges uh, they face uh, in, uh, in their real life. Uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, free of charge for, for all our audience. Uh, and if you're interested, you, you can also send us an email and we will put it 
Oh, thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer it. Thank you very much, Alona, for your interesting presentation. It's, uh, it, it was really interesting for me because I, uh, many years, for many years, I work in a psychiatric hospital. And in my country, in Ukraine, this um, uh, specific topic, it's, uh, I have a lot of challenges too. And um, I think every, everyone deserves a, a good life but we have a lot of problems in this field. So, um, dear colleagues, um, now we can open discussion. And as I see, we have a lot of uh, uh, questions and uh, feedback in our chat. And um, I would like to ask you, please voice your question and your feedback. Be free. Thank you, Victoria. Can I ask uh, a question to Alona? Yes, Alona, uh, you told about the statistic in, in your country and how uh, the um, condition of the illness people and families is. Uh, and uh, uh, my question is how you, how do you see uh, is it any uh, salvation do you have, uh, uh, for example, from mobile app uh, or uh, for your social um, activity? Is it any, any results do you see uh, uh, in, your, in, your, uh, in this work? Yeah, thank you so much for the question. It's a great question. Yeah, we, we usually when we start any uh, program, we do um, during the time, uh, usually every year, we, we do like in a small uh, survey or research to understand is it really useful for people who use, for example, application. And uh, if to speak about educational uh, courses for relatives, um, uh, all the people, uh, they mentioned that it's really important. Uh, most of them, they didn't know um, any, uh, they didn't get any information from the um, psychiatrist. Uh, I mean, at the beginning when their relatives uh, came from the hospital, uh, they didn't receive any information. So uh, most of them felt not only isolated, but also uh, they, they felt uh, like lack of information and uh, uh, steps, what uh, what to do, what next, what I have to do uh, with my uh, relative, how to organize and how to support. And um, they also, all, all our participants of this program, they mentioned that it was really important. And we also see some cases when uh, um, there are some changes in the family, fa families uh, happen. For example, uh, one of um, one of the uh, members of us support group uh, family member it was a woman a woman who uh, cared for uh, 10 years for her um, uh, son with uh, schizophrenia uh, and she uh, came to this group because uh, she didn't know what to do he, he didn't have work he didn't participate in any community uh, activity and so on he just stayed all the time at home she didn't know what to do, and she uh, uh, she participated in this educational course. She participated during the uh, um, six months with this uh, support group, and uh, to the moment we have changes not only in her uh, life, in her uh, state, uh, but also in her uh, son, because uh, thanks to our program he found a job. Uh, and he changed. Uh, so uh, yeah, there are a lot of cases, like special cases when people people feel uh, changes in their life. Uh, but we, yeah, we also do like an assessment of uh, effectiveness of our program, and we receive uh, we also received a lot of uh, letters from our. Uh, users of this mobile application uh, because we also have problems for um, especially relatives uh, taking care for uh, old people uh, and especially people with dementia. 
uh, they don't know uh, where, where to, to receive an information, to get information, how to organize uh, support and uh, what to do. Um, and uh, they, uh, we, we received a lot of letters like, like uh, thanks to, for, you, for your work. And it helps a lot for me to understand how, how to organize, uh, how to plan um, uh, this, uh, my, my activity and how to organize it. And uh, we also, uh, we uh, provide like um, feedback from uh, professionals for, for those people who use this application. And it really, uh, it helps a lot for, for uh, relatives uh, to not only to receive this information and to get, to get access for services, but also to feel uh, like they are not alone anymore. And this is a great, uh, I think, great thing. Thank you, Alona. And uh, one more question. Uh, I think this question will be for all, for all speakers as well. Uh, if we separate from, from the, uh, our job, uh, for, for someone, it's a profession. For someone, it's a, a practice. For someone, it's a research. Uh, but if we separate from from <laughs> the, these formal items, uh, what is the, um, this this task uh, or job or how can I say uh, this uh, deal community development for you as uh, as a human? What is it for you? What kind of value? you get from it uh, what is uh, the um, yes value for for you as as a human maybe a really beautiful question some benefits you <laughs> you get from oh, yeah. it. <laughs> um i can't talk for everybody but i can talk from my perspective and my whole career my whole academic study has been around social justice and, and giving, putting a spotlight on historically marginalized peoples. Um, so, and I think that to use my privilege as an educated white woman to be able to support people who have not had those privileges um, is my lifelong work. So where, whether that is about supporting older people as I do in my current job or my background is in youth work my academic background is in uh, looking at trade union groups in Zimbabwe so I think I think social justice just runs in the blood and it's just really important for me that whatever I do is about making communities stronger and fairer and um, so that's that's why I do the work that I do. Yes, I can share some of my uh, uh, thoughts behind uh, my research. Uh, as, a, as, as one of my research focus, uh, community support for carers. And, and I always think um, care, uh, carer support is for all the people in a society because everybody has the opportunity to be a carer. Uh, as me, as I, 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 I'm a father of two children. And then I share, I totally, I totally uh, know the, the hardship of being a, a father, uh, a parent. And then, um, so, um, uh, and my, another role is a sociologist. And then I always uh, make a connection between my experience to the social structure. So that's, that's for me, uh, sorting, uh, resolving the community issue is resolving how is my issue. And, and, and we, we um, society and individual is more or less it's, it's the same uh, uh, um, uh, entire uh, entity, I think. So that's why um, my value behind why I, I choose uh, care support as my research topic is because I shared the new uh, values for social justice and everybody has the, carer should have their, their, their right to uh, make their claim uh, uh, and have their right to assess 
uh, an appropriate uh, service or support from the community and the society. So um, that's why that that's why um, those rationale, those values, is, is motivate motivating me to um, to 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 think how to demonstrate the uh, innovative or the appropriate support for the carers. Oh, yeah, I can understand my value. So I study social network. So uh, I think it is quite important, you know, to build a community network, which can, you know, care for the whole community, including all members in the community. Yeah, there are some formal professional surveys and social service provider, but I think it is not enough because some people are being excluded from this formal service. For example, some homeless people or those who don't have formal identity, refugees, the like that, yeah, they are being excluded or those who are, you know, in disadvantaged group. So it is essential to build up a community network, including formal service providers and other all community participants, so that everyone can be, you know, be cared in the community because caring work is, you know, it's not just for family members, it includes all people in the caring process. So I really want to, you know, find a way to build up a, you know, community support network. Yeah, this is my, you know, value. Yeah. Thanks a lot I also answering. want to share, um, to say some words. It's, <clears throat> I was thinking that it's, it's really difficult for me to, to separate uh, me as a person from me as a professional, actually, <laughs> I, I don't really uh, understand who is, yeah, <laughs> who has the higher rate uh, inside of me. Uh, but if um, if to speak about me, um, uh, I always feel myself as a part of the community. And uh, and when I see that um, something, um, let's say, wrong, and I don't really like what, what, why the, how the things has happened, it's really important for me um, to make some changes, to, to do something at least, uh, to make some steps for changes. And I always um, understand that uh, the community actually is the greatest resource, even more greatest than uh, the, um, the our government or the whole country or the whole system we have uh, across the country. The community, uh, I can see it from my practice. Community always ha have... Uh, resources. Uh, it always can cope with most of problems inside of the community. Uh, we just need to give them uh, like uh, opportunities. We 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 can uh, organize. We can help. We can uh, teach how to do it. But uh, the community is a great resource, and what, this is what I believe. And I, I'm I'm the part of this resource, and I'm really proud to to be uh, the part of this great resource. Thank you. I absolutely agree with you. Thank you. Uh, so can I ask? Uh, I would like to thank everyone for the presentations because they are very uh, important social uh, topics that you raise uh, and which you engage in. Uh, indeed, everyone deserves a happy life, regardless of their social roles. And I think it's very interesting to hear about these difficulties on your way, because all three projects, yes, uh, Kai and San, uh, Luis, Alona, uh, are from different regions, from different spaces. And maybe uh, there are differences uh, in this regard, different, yes, difficulties. I think that in the UK, um, services for older people are traditionally quite um, uh, kind of, they see older people as victims. They're quite um, paternalistic. Um, they feel sorry for older people and they view them as people that need a service rather than as people that can offer something of value and um, that can contribute to kind of community life. So one of our biggest challenges is that the way that we view older people is not common practice in the UK. So when we want to build partnerships and we want to um, 
make progress with our work we have to explain everything explain strengths-based working explain basic principles of community development explain um asset focused um outlooks and um and that is a challenge um you know as a practitioner that can be repetitive and a challenge um the other challenge that we are facing in the uk is the cost of living crisis so um for older people um energy prices have gone up in the UK, um, their income. Oh, sorry, I, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I moved my hand in passion and I muted myself. Um, uh, yeah, so their income has not increased. They can't raise their income. They, they can't go back to work because of health conditions and their age. And it's a real, it's a real barrier for us because when we talk about loneliness, one of the biggest challenges for loneliness is around income because you know if you can go and have a coffee with your friends or go to the cinema go to the theater then you can stay connected and you can stay uh, you can keep your friendship group but when you can't afford to do those things anymore and you can't afford to heat your home to have visitors and you're ashamed of being able to not feed yourself then those are real barriers for people to stay connected and also to, for people to stay well. So um, that is our that is our current biggest challenge at the moment is the cost of living crisis and how that impacts on our work trying to build connections. So uh, for the challenge and difficulties in Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong's aging society, so many elderly and many elderly are looking after elderly. So uh, the most difficult thing is how to engage these elderly and their caregivers, because it is definitely okay if they come to the service provider and use and seek help. But uh, in Hong Kong, many of them, you know, we've not go to the service, postal service provider and do not think that they need help. They don't think they don't have any problem and it is their responsibility to look after their family members so they cannot or they should not uh, seek help from the social service provider. So there are many hidden elderly and hidden caregivers who actually are exhausted, are over you know, burdened. But if they do not, you know, uh, contact the social service provider, it is very, very difficult for people to, you know, look for them, to locate them and provide support to them. So uh, right now, it is the most difficult thing or issues, you know, in Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> if to speak about Belarus, actually, most of uh, the challenges and issues I mentioned in my presentation, but if to um, if to go to the high level, uh, I would rather say I totally agree with Lewis. We have the same problem about this paternalistic approach. Um, actually, in all post-Soviet countries, I think so. Uh, we still have the same models, the same approaches. It did, didn't change for during all these times. Um, uh, it doesn't matter uh, what kind of uh, different uh, programs we have and uh, you know projects in. in our social services, we have to. Um, we have, I think that we have to start from changing, changing our view, uh, not only among our professionals uh, in social sphere and medical sphere, but also uh, our view among the members of our communities, because people still believe that our, like um, our country, our government, or some other system, they have to. Uh, to cope with all the problems and to decide all the questions uh, we face in our uh, everyday life, they uh, didn't. Um, they don't. Uh, they not, not only they. Of course, they don't know how to do it, but sometimes they even didn't seek for uh, help or for support, or they didn't try to find something inside of the community, uh, some kind of resources. So uh, I think that we, we, if to speak not only about mental health system, but about uh, all the systems um, like social system, medical system, we have to rethink uh, about our uh, systems. We have to, to change our view and to start from ourselves because sometimes even, uh, even um, 
I can I can uh, say that even um, me sometimes uh, I I think um, in the wrong way uh, when I try to you know to run a new project. I understand that uh, probably it will be a much faster or easier. Uh, to uh, to decide for uh, the um, for the group what to do and how to do because I I do know how to do it I, I have a lot of practice I have a lot of knowledge from across the world how to do it and uh, I understand inside of me I understand that this is a wrong way uh, of thinking so I think that the, the greatest challenge is uh, what we think about <laughs> ourselves as, as professionals as well. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe more questions or can I, Victoria? Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, thank, uh, thank you for your great presentation and your contribution to this specific heart um, project. It's very awesome. Great, thank you very much. And uh, I have one question. I understand that this is a serious term, but maybe in short answers, uh, how do you overcome uh, professional burnout? Thank you. What a great question and something that we don't ask enough. Um, so, as head of community services for my organisation, I look after five projects and I look after maybe 20, 26 staff and a, a, probably about 700 volunteers. So well-being is really important. If we're going to get this done, if we're going to make the impact we want to, then we have to keep our staff well um so for me make sure that everybody takes their holiday that they are entitled to i make sure that nobody works longer weeks than what they're paid for so if you're paid for 35 hours a week then that's what you those are the hours that you do um that people can have the freedom and autonomy to manage their diaries so if they have to work on a Saturday, then they don't work on a Monday and they can do that with trust. Um, and we have lots of wellbeing training. So I am a mental health first aider. So I, my, my staff can come to me at any time if they have worries about their wellbeing. We have leave policies as an organization so people can take time off for caring responsibilities if there's bereavement. We provide uh, counselling as an organisation to our staff for free if they need it. Um, so it's really important to create the culture that people can stay well. And we offer the same to our volunteers as well. Although, I mean, take up is very limited. It, we don't have a, a, bit, a high take up of, of those um, resources, but but we are trying to build a culture where people know that they're available and that they can access that support if they need to. Yes, uh, I, I, for the, for, for the collate uh, burnout issues, and uh, first of all, in Hong Kong, uh, burnout is, it's not an issue <laughs> because uh, uh, the, the, the drug culture in Hong Kong is required people to, to give them off. And but I know uh, for the social service or, or com community development practitioner, they need to bear a lot of burden, uh, especially um, uh, handling the, the relationships uh, with, with with the committee members, and then and then handling relationships with the managerial level. And uh, what we are insist just I always talk with the practitioners in Cara Cafe. Uh, we are shared the same value and same. Um, same direction uh, is that uh, we, we are willing to to do one more step, and uh, it may change the society to 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 a better one. And but uh, we always just what Louise said. Uh, uh, rest is important, and I I would like to add one more point on um for for the burnout instead of the 
uh, uh, take, taking rest is uh, the practitioner also need an informal social support network, uh, not just the carer, uh, because we need to share uh, our our tears our tears and pain in, in 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 the service experience. We are we are not a machine. We are not a robot. We are also human. Uh, it is very 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 basic needs for a community development practitioner or a professional social worker. Um, so uh, it, that is a very good question asking uh, while we are asking the, uh, 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 the, 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 the client's lead or, or the, com to the committed lead, we, we also need to ask um, the practitioner's lead in, instead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you want to to say something else? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Actually, it's a it's a really um, difficult difficult question uh, for me because <laughs> if to speak about our um, organization, of course, yeah, we have uh, different uh, programs for our staff uh, to support not only staff but our volunteers. Uh, we we have a psychotherapist where we, we cooperate with to help our staff and our uh, volunteers, especially in those programs uh, when they work with uh, difficult groups like people with severe mental illness. But uh, as um, right now, I understand that if to speak about me, uh, <laughs> it's not the same situation. I. I uh, I always uh, tell people you have to care about your mental health and physical health, but you know I'm not uh, I'm not uh, really uh, stick to the to the plan, um, and I have um, uh, less uh, possibilities as a director of organization. I have less possibilities to um, to to have uh, some free days, uh, especially during the last um, few uh, years, it was really great challenges for non-governmental uh, organizations in our country. And we faced a lot, a lot of problems. And I, I uh, also um, I had uh, some problems with my mental health, not so really uh, difficult, but uh, I, I faced it. Um, but uh, I always try to find something. Uh, I like to find a ground for myself. I at least for one hour, for for a few minutes, uh, to switch off from all the tasks of of the day from uh, my mobile phone. I, I'm trying to do it if I have uh, this uh, possibility and um, to 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 you know to look at. Uh, uh, something uh, um, uh, beautiful, or just to 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 take some free uh, minutes uh, to listen to um, uh, I don't know some music if I have if I have, have this possibility. But I understand that it's really important uh, to do this. Uh, it's really important to uh, keep your resources. Um, but sometimes it's not so easy. Uh, especially in challenges, uh, in challenging times, it's not so easy to do in practice. This is what I see, and uh, I understand that uh, even uh, we have program, as I mentioned, for our to support our staff. But I understand that sometimes it's um, not enough for for them uh, to go through the challenges in their lives, uh, to face all the difficulties, and. Um, to, to keep their resources and uh, still uh, to be a good professionals uh, and to provide uh, services for people they work with. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we try to do every every best uh, just to, to, to keep <laughs> our lives in recess. Thank you, Eleona, for your deep uh, answer. Uh, I see your face from year to year. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, a brilliant discussion. Um, unfortunately, time passed quick and uh, we, we have to finish for the moment. And um, we have a um, comment in our chat from our organization team. Uh, I would like to uh, read it. 
one of the most important com uh, components of the inner world community development conference is the possibility of informal communication of participants. More uh, opportunities for communication and to exchange experience open up uh, today on the Discord platform, IP virtual space. Join us, just press the link. And uh, I would like to ask you press the link, join if you're not joined before. And um, um, we will keep in touch. Um, this uh, session, um, have been recorded and we can uh, open and see it on the YouTube channel. Um, we um, still continue our co co collaboration. Uh, it is just beginning. Um, and uh, of course, the time we have for each session is not enough to discuss everything we want. 